Hello and welcome to this video of new features and improvements for Autodesk's Revit MEP 2021. My name is Ian Garwood and I'm a consultant in the professional services team at XITech. The improvements this time around are focused on the electrical side of Revit MEP and contain some long awaited and welcome changes. So let's start with electrical circuit naming. Circuit naming to UK standards has been right up there at the top of many users wish lists with various workarounds and compromises used when working with this aspect of electrical circuits. I'm very pleased to say that the 2021 release of Revit MEP now includes a flexible way to customize circuit naming. It starts in the electrical settings with a review of the phase naming. Once this is set to UK standard, we can now look at the addition of circuit naming types. This feature allows a user to create a new circuit naming scheme. Here, I will name the new scheme by way and by phase. After naming the new scheme, simply add the fields of data you want to appear in the circuit reference, not just same as adding fields to a schedule. A prefix, suffix or separator can also be added if required. Now our new scheme has been created, let's access a panel and review an existing and familiar property within Revit MEP. The circuit naming parameter found in electrical panels and switchboards contains our new circuit naming scheme. Selecting this option applies the new naming scheme to the panel. All that remains is to create circuits that are connected to the panel with our new naming scheme. The process of creating new circuits is exactly the same, but the difference is that your custom circuit naming scheme is being applied. As new circuits are created, the new circuit naming scheme can be seen on the panel schedule. I'm sure you'll agree that this is an easy to use, easy to set up and very welcome addition to Revit MEP. Next, let's take a look at panel schedules and drawing sheets. Although it has been previously possible to add panel schedules to drawing sheets, it wasn't possible to see which panel had been added to which sheet, in the same way it was possible with other views added to sheets. A panel schedule added to sheets in Revit MEP 2021 now appear along with the rest of the views found on that particular sheet. It's also worth noting that as with legends, a panel schedule can appear on the same sheet and other sheets more than once without duplicating it. Next, let's take a look at phase selectable switchboard circuits. With electrical distribution in Revit MEP, a single phase distribution board fed from a switchboard will always connect to the first phase. The default panel schedule for switchboards in Revit MEP is set to only show the phase that's being used, therefore, left as it is, we only ever see phase 1. Even if the schedule is modified to show all phases, there was not a way to move panels to a different phase. Here we see the same arrangement in Revit MEP 2021, with a modified panel showing all three phases on the switchboard. For any single phase load connected to a switchboard, the new switch phase feature gives the option to move loads across phases. And when used, the results can be seen on the modified switchboard panel schedule. The next feature we'll take a look at is switchboard circuit quantity. Prior to the 2021 release of Revit MEP, elements identified as either switchboards or panel boards had a property called maximum number of single pole breakers. This property determined the number of slots available within the respective board. For panel boards, this wasn't a problem as a three phase circuit would show us taking three slots. However, on a switchboard schedule, a three phase circuit would only show as occupying a single slot, giving the appearance of available capacity. And if that capacity was exceeded, the user would receive an error message. For Revit 2020, the first message would relate to using feed-through lugs, meaning the new circuit is connected to the switchboard, but not through a breaker. The final message basically telling the user there is no more capacity and to increase the number of available slots. 
This has been addressed for switchboards in Revit MEP 2021, where the maximum number of single pole breakers parameter has been replaced with maximum number of circuits, giving a truer reflection of the number of occupied and available slots. Put into practice, even though the new parameter of maximum number of available circuits is set at 12, the same as the previous number of maximum single pole breakers, you can see that the switchboard's capacity is not exceeded after connecting four three-phase panels, giving a more accurate account of the remaining available capacity. In this example, I'm connecting five distribution boards and a switchboard and we'll be able to continue adding circuits until the maximum of 12 is reached. Let's take a look at single phase circuits and panel schedules. Two specific issues previously arose when working in this area. Firstly, loads connected to a single phase board would show as being connected across different phases on a panel schedule. Here we see the loads connected across two phases. Secondly, there was no allowance in panel schedule template options to show only the phase the loads were connected to. The settings only catered for hiding or disabling the third phase. In Revit MEP 2021, these have both now been addressed. Here, just for demonstration, I've set up a single phase panel schedule, but have set the display to show three phases. Unlike the results we have seen when connecting loads to single phase panels in previous versions of Revit, loads connected to a single phase panel in Revit MEP 2021 are all connected to the same phase, offering a more accurate view on electrical distribution within your project. The second issue we found with single phase circuits was that of dealing with the unused phases. To see how this has been addressed in Revit MEP 2021, we need to edit the template and take a look at the template options for the panel schedule. Here, we will see a fundamental change in the way unused phases are dealt with. Revit MEP 2021 now allows all unused phases to be disabled or hidden rather than just the third phase. After making the necessary adjustments to the template and choosing to hide the columns of unused phases, we can then apply those changes and update the panel schedule in our project. A look at the final panel schedule shows only a single column with all loads connected to the same phase. Let's now take a look at the two panels we've been working with, LP1 and SB1. We can see that the loads for LP1 are totaled on the switchboard SP1, and that LP1 is connected to the first phase of SB1. We have already seen that we can use the new Switch Phases feature to change the connected phase for single phase panel boards on a switchboard. So I'm going to edit the panel schedule template as before to change the display of the single phase panel schedule so that it shows the three phases. If we now turn our attention to the switchboard panel schedule for SB1 and select the circuit for LP1, we can use the switch phase feature to move the circuit to different phases. At the same time, we can see that the single phase panel board LP1 is updating to reflect that change. Finally, let's take a look at the frame size parameter for spare circuits. When adding a spare into a panel schedule in previous versions of Revit MEP, it would have been represented by a dash in the frame size column. This was because there was no frame size parameter for spares. For Revit MEP 2021, this has been updated so that the rating value is now displayed against spares added to your panel schedule. Selecting the value from the panel schedule will give you access to the properties of the spare circuit, where the frame size value can be changed and updated in the panel schedule. 
Thank you very much for watching this new features overview for Revit MEP 2021. I hope you found it interesting and useful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.